All right, everybody, hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse, and I'm the host here on this channel. And if this is your first time coming by and checking out what I do here, thank you so very much. And if things pertaining to Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism at large, um, what is usually called in modern times nowadays as also true, uh, if that's your sort of thing and that's what you're interested in, Go ahead and click subscribe right down below, and then don't forget to ding the bell notifications, and then you'll be notified when I do upload new content. All right, everybody, so like I said, welcome back, and welcome back after a very long kind of hiatus. Um, this is actually my first video in over a month, which for anybody who's been following what I do here on YouTube and Facebook or whatever for any length of time, you realize that that's, that's a long, long gap. So. I want to take some time before we get into today's subject and kind of address this um, elephant in the room, as it were, um, and just kind of let you all know what's been going on, why I haven't been uploading any new content, and then what my hope is uh, going forward to kind of you know correct that. So um, I work in IT, right? I'm an IT, I'm an IT professional, and I've my job um, that I've had for the last over four years now. Um, has moved strictly to a work from home position, which is great um, and is not the reason why I haven't been uploading new content. But the biggest thing is what I do is I work um, for a company that provides service desk uh, services um, uh, to other companies. So our customer recently um, has been in the middle uh, and kind of been working through a, a merger, as it were, or an integration is probably the more accurate term to um, combine parts of their business into one unified uh, company. Um, so with that being said, um, that all happened almost a year ago. The, the, the steps in that direction started about a year ago. Well, in the springtime, right around after the time that COVID hit, the service desk uh, that my company provides service for this customer to, um, the service desk, um, on the, on the company that they merged with, they kept their own internal service desk. And then around the early springtime, mid midsummer, early springtime, is when things started happening for my company to acquire that other company's service desk and to, to combine it as one since the two companies were merging. They didn't want to have two separate service desks. So therefore, I was heavily involved in a lot of the discovery sessions, the, the uh, integration of the service desks, you know, uh, all that transition work that took place. I was heavily involved in that from, you know, around April up until uh, last month. So last month, September, the middle of September is when we went live with the assumption of service, as, as it's called. And basically ever since the assumption of service for the last month, which is about as long as you guys haven't seen me here on this channel. Uh, all of that time has been, uh, you know, I, I've been very, very deeply involved in the success of the company's role in assuming that service desk uh, business. So my days have been longer, my hours have been crazy. Um, just to guy, just kind of give you guys an idea, an idea or a sense of what I'm talking about. It means that I'm literally in front of a desk, in front of my computer for, you know, between 10 to 12, sometimes longer hours a day, five days a week, sometimes on, on weekends too. So quite honestly, the last thing that I want to do after I've pulled, you know, 50, 60 hours or whatever it is um, sometimes uh, throughout the week is the last thing that I want to do is stand in front of a camera and then sit in front of a computer for another few hours to edit content to put up here on this channel. So you'll forgive me hopefully and you'll excuse the fact that I've just been so burnt out and sitting at my desk and working um, for my job so heavily, which again, I'm not complaining about, it's just the way things are and that's just facts. Um, my role and my, and my, you know, uh, my job with the company is to facilitate you know, training and make sure things go smoothly. So very, very busy. That, with that being said, um, we've been in the uh, assumption of service we've been assumed we've assumed that service now for over a month so things are starting to be not as crazy anymore we're getting closer to the holiday season now where things typically tend to calm down a bit people are starting to you know take all their vacation days and they're gonna start using those so I'm hoping that going forward my schedule will be you know 
not as hectic and I won't be as burnt out sitting in front of a, of a computer and, and, and stuff to so be able to come out here and do more regular content on a, on a weekly basis. So that is my hope. That is where we stand. Um, thank you guys for listening to that spiel for about the last five or six minutes, however long it's been. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into today's subject. All right, so today's subject is one that I actually intended on doing a while ago before everything happened that I kind of told you guys about just now. Um, but here we are today doing it. Um, and I wanted to talk a bit about the subject of boasting or what boasts are uh, from a heathen perspective, from a heathen point of view. Um, so the, the, th the thing about it is, is, I guess the reason why I wanted to... Um, to talk about it is there's a lot of folks that I that I uh, you know that I uh, interact with not just online but in in real life who um, share a lot with what I do personally and also in my you know religious or spiritual views um, to some degree and we have um, tied a lot of weird together we, we've shared a lot of you know conversations spent a lot of time with each other um, and one of the things that we we do with each other. Um, at times, and especially when it comes to ritual, is we will um, boast of each other's greatness, or we will we will you know boast of our own um, accomplishments and things like that. So I wanted to talk a bit today about you know what boasting is in heathenry, what it is, and then why we do it. Because I think a lot of the the things that get missed nowadays, especially with newbie heathens coming into this path, is the why is so very very important. You know what you do. Um, is not almost as nearly important as why you're doing it. There has to be intent and there has to be purpose. So to just kind of clear the air and to just get it you know, straight off um, for everybody that's watching, again, if you're new, my views on things when it comes to heathenry are, are kind of a mix of um, historical uh, reconstruction. I'm not a really what you would call like a hardcore recon or, or historical reconstruction is heathen, but I do like to pull a lot from those historical sources and apply it into modern times. So I kind of a little bit of a mix of the two. You know, I'm not like a, you know, neo-pagan, uh, have no sense of, of any sort of structure uh, kind of kind of heathen, uh, but I'm also not so stuck in the past that I can't and, and don't want to look at applying things now in, in modern times. So that's where I come from, and that's kind of the, the, the approach that I take. Um, and a lot of what you see uh, from from me and a lot of what I put out here is going to be my own take on it So please don't stop the buck does not stop here <laughs> is what I'm trying to say I'm by no means a you know leading authority within heathenry or anything like that So do your own research find your own answers uh, But maybe some of what I say helps kind of take you in that direction. So anyway boasts or boasting uh, in heathenry so a boast should be something that everybody knows or understands what it is but from a heathen's perspective a boast is something that we say, um, or that is said, that we believe will increase our own personal worth in the eyes of the folks that we, uh, you know, in encounter. Mainly our tribes, our our, our whatever group we are with, um, the tribe that we tie weird with, the, those nearest and dearest to us. When we boast to them, we are saying things that we believe are going to kind of, kind of boost our worth uh, in front of them. And it's not the same as bragging. So we're going to talk a little bit about that because bragging, um, there's a different intent behind what bragging is versus the intent behind what boasting is, right? And like I mentioned before, the intent is everything. So when giving a boast, we are adding something to the well that can impact uh, and or affect not just us as individuals, because like I said, we're, we're, we're saying something that's kind of like, look at you know what I've done and, and check out what this thing that I've been able to accomplish and give us a view of, of being uh, worth more to our tribes. Um, we're not only doing it to, to kind of uh, you know do that for ourselves, but we're doing it to also um, benefit the tribe with whom we tie weird with. So the folks that we tie weird with, as I mentioned before, the, the nearest and dearest to us, we're, we're sharing these accomplishments, we're sharing these things um, to say, hey, not, look how much more um, worth I am to now to you, but, but, but this is something that all of us can, can kind of glean from and, and, and take 
um, and, and benefit from. So let's just say, for example, that a boast that could be given, this is a very common one, you know, um, to get a better job, let's say, you know, to, um, to say that I'm going to get a better job in front of your, you know, kinsmen and kinswomen or, or kith and kin, the, the, the people who are, again, nearest and dearest to you, your tribe, um, by boasting that you're going to get a better job, it's going to now require you to put the effort in, to put the work in. It's going to take hard work and dedication and, and, and attention um, to be accountable for what you're saying. Right. So if you don't, if you just say, oh, I'm, I'm going to get a better job and then you actually don't, you know, show up to work early, stay late, you know, do the things that are going to get you the recognition with your employer that shows them that you are worth more and that you should get paid more and that you're going to get either a promotion or, or you know, be, be given more responsibilities or a, a raise or something like that. Right. Um, if you don't do that, then your boast is, is meaningless and it doesn't have any, doesn't carry any weight and therefore your worth is not increased at all. So when you say something like that, you then have to go out and do, you know, you have to be a doer because the doers are the ones that get things done, obviously. So when you say that you're going to do something like that, that hard work and effort that is required kind of, like I said, holds you to a level of accountability um, to not just yourself but to your tribe because now you're saying this in front of everybody. Now everybody's expecting that you are going to do that thing to get a better job. You're not just going to sit back and, and be lazy about it. You're actually going to go and do it. Now if they boast to do such and such, whether it be, you know, get a better job or whatever, you're, you know, whatever it is that you're boasting about, if that boast is then achieved, then you have the opportunity to deliver what is called, and, and, th and this is kind of focused more into, I think, an Anglo-Saxon approach to heathenry, um, but I take this and I apply it to my own uh, approach with, with those that I work with. You, you, you now have the opportunity, if you've achieved the thing that you boasted you were going to do, you now have the opportunity to come back and give what's called a yelp. So you're gonna see that word appear up here, it's an old English word. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the etymology of, of things here um, in just a minute. But now is the time that if you've done what you said you were going out to do, and you've, you, you can now give a yelp of this boast. So um, if you don't achieve that, if you, let's say you just say, yeah, I'm going to get a better job, and then you actually don't do anything to give you the opportunity to do that, and you've not achieved those goals, now what happens, or what should be happening, is you now must pay some sort of, uh, like a ransom, uh, or what's called shield. Again, this kind of focuses more on the Anglo-Saxon approach of heathenry, but I really like this approach. I think it fits well into how society um, functions best, so it's something that I've adopted, even though I'm not really an Anglo-Saxon heathen. Um, but shield has to be paid. We're going to get talking into about what that is and get into just a little bit. So this um, part of boasting, you know, when you just the things that we're talking about now where you know you boast about what you're going to do in front of your tribe you accomplish it now you can give a yelp about it and then you can uh, if or if you don't now you must pay shield these are things that kind of touch a bit more it's 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 specific to an, an approach to heathenry that again not everybody follows but i think it also ties into some of the metaphysical aspects of why we do what we do you know the why behind it which is again the reason i've adopted this approach um, so we're going to touch on that here in just a bit as well. All right, so again, to understand the meaning of a lot of things within heathenry, for me, what has helped me is to learn about the etymology of the words that we're talking about. So today we're talking about boasts or boasting. So to kind of get a better understanding, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss a little bit about the uh, etymology of the words or the terms from which they're derived. So we're going to look at a word, again, it's going to pop up on your screen. That's an old English word, and it's called bait. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And the word bait comes from an earlier uh, old English word. And again, if I'm mispronouncing this, I apologize, but it's going to be uh, an earlier word called bihat. And bihat means promise. So the theme is, you know, um, that there's something that is uh, kind of inherently promised or sworn to do when a boast or a is given. Um, the word again, yelp, means boast. Um, so 
there's I, I, I the way I see it is that it there the, the the promise to do something is inherently tied in the boast it's not just a bragging of look what I've got look what I've done look what I can do you know look at the beautiful car that I've got look how much more money I've got than you it's nothing like that um, there's there's something said that's that's a promise of I'm, I'm going to do this I'm going to achieve this for, for the greatness of not just myself but for everyone around me um, and this is what I'm going to do um, and then so we're going to talk a little bit about kind of the structure of a bayat or the structure of a boast because we have some sources or at least one pretty good source um, that a lot of uh, heathens like to reference and that is the, the, the Beowulf story, the Beowulf saga. So I'm going to read to you from a couple of lines or several lines from Beowulf to give you the idea of the structure of a bayat. So this is Beowulf line 6, uh, I think it's 675 through 687. I'll double check it and I'll annotate it uh, somewhere up here as well or you'll see it up on your screen or down in the description. But on those lines it says, spoke he then some good boast words, talking about uh, Beowulf. Beowulf the gate before he went to bed down. I consider my own prowess with battle work unbowed when compared to Grendel, as Grendel himself slays without sword, that thief of life. Nevertheless, I shall do all. He has not the advantage that he shall slay me, though he hew away my shield, though he be vigorous in his evil deed. But we this night should forego the sword if he seeks to dare battle beyond weapons. And afterwards, wise God shall decide which of us, O holy Lord, is worthy of glory as he deems proper. So based on this, you know, reference from Beowulf, we determine or we can see that there is a definite sort of format of, of how a boast is, is given or how Beowulf is given. First you have the pledge, right, which is the thing that is being pledged to endeavor. The person, for instance, Beowulf, is here saying he's going to kill Grendel. So he pledges that he's going to endeavor to accomplish this specific challenge, which is your pledge, the very first step. The second thing is to give the speculation of the outcome. So you will predict two possible outcomes. You're either going to succeed or fail. And then you're going to elaborate on the effects of that outcome. Now this is where, what I mentioned before, where shield takes into effect. Because when a boast is given, um, there's, there's, there's typically somebody, uh, well there's lots of people present, but there's typically somebody present there who carries the role of what would be called a thule, or the thula, sorry, thula. And the thula is kind of the regulator or um, person to challenge the boast giver, the one who's giving the bayat, or the one who's giving the boast, to say, hey, 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 before you, before you say that you're going to do this sort of thing, are you even qualified, are you able to do it? And again, if you read Beowulf, you will see that there's, um, there's, there's a, the role of the Thula is, is played out in that saga. So um, check that out uh, for more details. I'm blanking on the name of who it is. If I can find it, I'll put it somewhere up here on the screen. You'll see it. Um, but it's there. Um, so basically that person's role is to make sure that the one who's giving the boast, the one who's doing what they're saying they're supposed to do, is not speaking out of their, you know, not speaking out of turn. What are you going to do if you fail? Now that part of things is usually set by the lord or the king of the hall or the chieftain of the hall, the one who's the, 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 the leader, the ultimate leader. That person is going to be the one who sets what's called shield or the recompense that needs to be paid if they indeed fail at performing the task that they are set out to do. So the last and final thing that needs to be done um, is the commissioning of a higher power, which as we read in Beowulf, um, he calls upon a holy power to determine the outcome. Whoever, you know, based on, on, on that time frame, you know, he was calling on, on, on God or, or, or the Lord to say, whoever the victor will be, will be determined by him. So it's not uncommon to, to do that during a bayot or during a boast. At the end of it is for them to sort of commission the outcome of things to a higher power. It could be our gods, goddesses, what have you. Uh, so there we have the kind of structure or format of a proper boast or bayat. So at this point, hopefully, uh, people who are watching have gotten a good 
enough idea of the what behind a boast or what is a boast and what does a boast mean when we say as heathens that we give boasts um, we're talking probably uh, things that are done usually around um, a, a drinking ritual called sumble toasts boasts and oaths is a popular you know uh, thing to to see done um, and hear done at a sumble but um, that's what we're talking about when we say boasts now one again to, to kind of sum it all up a bit boasts are given with the intent to boost worth within a tribe worth is achieved through deeds right you don't know how much a person is worth unless you actually see them do things to determine that worth it can also be said that deeds um, the, the things that fall under deeds are the words that we speak so in our you know I, I, I quite often refer to you know ancient times as arch heathen times times that kind of predate uh, Christianity influence in Scandinavia uh, or these Germanic countries um, but in those times worth developed into what would be determined as the value of an individual and it was based on his or her moral character so you see a lot um, um, similarities you see a lot of similarities between words such as worth and honor um, because terms like honor and worth uh, were basically the value of someone based upon his moral ca moral character or his honor his or her honor so you really can't have worth without honor and you can't have honor without worth so a lot of it does have to do with your your moral character and 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 you know again the, the reasons why you're doing it so to give a boast in front of your tribe in front of your nearest and dearest is to basically confirm in front of all that you are indeed worth your weight you're you're, you're putting it out on the line you know you're saying that i'm going to out to i'm going to accomplish a b and c i'm going to get a better job i'm going to finish writing this book i'm going to you know whatever it is that you're setting out to do and you're you're putting yourself out there as, i am this is what i'm supposed to this is going to increase my worth to, to not just myself but to everybody else worth is determined and placed on an individual by the tribe so now it's up to them to sort of hold you accountable for that it's confirmation and it's a sort of celebration of deeds accomplished right um and what it what it what it inherently does is the reason why we're going to get into that now some of the, the reasons why is that it adds good to the well the well that collectively the tribe um, draws from everything that is done and said by the tribe is it ends up in the well so which builds up over time to become the tribes uh, or log for the next generation <clears throat> or for the next group of people that kind of carry on and continue with that tribe after the original or founding maybe uh, individuals are, are no longer with that tribe the tribe lives on and the reason why it lives on is because of all of the things that have been added to the well things end up in the well whether you want to or not good or bad but by this very thing the the, the more the good that gets added the, the, the more it kind of clears the water so anything bad that was done, anything that's not healthy for the tribe sort of gets filtered out by all the good that's added. So it's this constant, you know, check and balance that's being done, as it were. Um, so the why of it, why we boast, why we do these things, it's to improve our own worth and to boost our own worth. But that worth that we are now have a higher worth and a, and a higher value um, within the tribe is going to now increase the luck of the tribe and something that lives on when the individual members are no longer with the tribe so that's kind of the reason why boasts are given it's not simply to just brag about it remember I mentioned earlier that boasting is not the same as bragging you know <clears throat> we're not shoving in people's faces you know how awesome that we think we are um, you know look at this new car I've got I make more money than you I live in a better house than you I live in a better neighborhood my kids are prettier than yours my dog does better tricks you know look what I can do I can you know whatever 
it's not a brag. It's not, you know, just shoving in people's faces how great we think we are. What it is, it is a declaration of our worth in front of our nearest and dearest and our victories that should be celebrated and shared with those individuals because my victory with within you know my hearth is a victory for my hearth and a victory within my victory within my tribe is a victory for the tribe something that everybody can um, be joyful about and share in its greatness and kind of have some of that luck you know um, a part of theirs as well because again it's something that goes into the, the, the collective well for the tribe you know so it, when, when we talk about the differences of boasts and brags, you know, bragging, bragging about anything, you know, new car, new home, fancier clothes, you know, I got promoted, I got a raise, whatever, <clears throat> it really doesn't do anything in itself just by like just saying it out there and, and, and not doing it properly. It doesn't do anything to build on the luck that's shared amongst those who have tied weird together. It doesn't, you know. So simply putting yourself out there with, you know, look what I can do, look what I have, look what, you know, I have that you don't, is nothing more than just a shallow gesture or attempt, in my mind, um, at being validated. It's really all it is. You have a, a lesser view of your own self. You think your worth is so minimal or, or, or low that you need that validation from other people, right? I got something new and fancy. I got a new this. I got a new that. Look at this. Look at this. See? See how much I'm worth? See how great I am? validation and it's, and, it, and it's nothing that builds luck so the great things that we accomplish whatever they may be have the chance to be entered into the annals of history is the way I say it or become a saga for later on right we live in saga times the things that we do now the, the times that we share our victories that we accomplish whatever they may be whatever greatness that we can achieve when done rightly can become the songs that get sung about us as individuals when we are no longer walking this physical plane right so, um, the songs that are sung within our respective circles, the stories that are told are intended for those specific audiences. So, you know, yes, it might, may I, be, I might be proud of the fact that I've, you know, been promoted at my job or I got a raise or, you know, I was able to pay off a debt um, that I set out to pay off and, you know, but th those sorts of things are, are, are <clears throat> intended for a specific audience, I think. Um, your nearest and dearest, whatever label you want to put to it. I use the term tribe because that's my approach to heathenry. It's, it's tribal. And um, so I always look at it as, you know, let the greatness of our boasts be shared with those nearest and dearest to us. Let those things become the songs of renown of ourselves, right? Kind of like it's like a legacy that gets built. Once we're gone, physically gone, no longer around, the memory, the greatness, those things live on forever, for as long as the, our, our memory is, is honored. So to me, boasts are much more than just a, you know, look what I've got. Look at how awesome things are. It is a something that is tied to a promise, something that is given to declare your worth, and then once you accomplish it, you give a yelp about it. You say, yes, I have done what I set out to do. And now we can all celebrate in, in that victory because the victory was not just mine, but it was for the collective. It was for, you know, everybody else here for the tribe. So that's today's video. I hope you all liked it. And I hope that the wait for the last month for this video to come out was worth it. To everybody as always I invite you to share your comments down below in the comment section um, don't forget to check out the description area for all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings there's a link tree link that points you in all the directions I've got Teespring I've got PayPal I've got you know the, the Facebook page that you can like follow me on Twitter all of that stuff is up in the or the, down in the description that link tree link so check it out see what fits you if you want to become a patreon there's there's various tiers with uh, patreon support Speaking of Patreon, by the way, everybody who is a Patreon at the uh, Jarl or below level, um, I think it's Jarl Chieftain levels, get a rune draw each month. I know I haven't sent it out, and I apologize for the lateness. Again, it goes back to the things that I talked about at the beginning of this video. I will be getting those out to you, and also for 
um, for last month, September, and also for the month of October. So you guys, just hopefully you will uh, you know stick around some more. Um, just kind of bear with me while I've been you know dealing with this whole thing and trying to maintain my professional career and not lose my mind in the process. So again, thank you all so much for your constant support. Thank you for watching today's video. If you do like it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share, subscribe, you know the whole bit. Hail, thank you all, and I'll see you in the next video.